In the last video, we went over the reason why Sandor will not kill the mountain. Because the hound is already dead. Sandor was reborn. He's moved on. A direwolf, a big dog, with his new pack. I'm prepping for the Jon Snow live chat with Living My Rhapsody over on the Justin Thomas show this Friday, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So this is not going to be the full Arya video. This is going to be short and sweet. Just one of the many clues that Arya will kill the mountain. It's an important one, though. To highlight it, we will also go over three common misconceptions. First, Robert's Rebellion was, in fact, built on a lie. I got a comment the other day where someone said, Robert's Rebellion was not built on a lie. I closed, I closed the video as soon as I saw that. <laughs> no, you didn't, because you took the time to write that dumb comment. You lied. But jokes aside, I know it sounds off. It was built on a misunderstanding, not a lie, right? I'm with you, or I was. But technically, any false statement is a lie, even if the person saying it does not realize that it's a lie. So Robert's Rebellion was built on a lie. Rhaegar didn't kidnap Lyanna. They sang a secret song. They loved each other. Number two, Rhaegar and Lyanna were not responsible for Robert's Rebellion. So we've got to stop hating on them. First off, it should be called John Aaron's Rebellion, not Robert's Rebellion. But putting that aside, if you hate on them, I hear you. I've called Rhaegar a busted, busted, busted. many times over the years, thinking that he and Lyanna were responsible for the war, a war that killed so many people. But I changed, because it's just not fair. If Rhaegar and Lyanna had told people the truth, that Rhaegar was getting an annulment, and Lyanna was breaking her betrothal, then yeah, absolutely, or most likely, many lives may not have been lost. But that may have come at the expense of their freedom, to spend life with the person whom they loved. Lyanna may have been forced to marry Robert, or maybe... Lyanna and Rhaegar would have still gotten married. Royalty has gone against arranged marriages in the past, like all of Aegon V's children. Granted, one of them caused a minor rebellion, but the point is, it's possible. Maybe Rhaegar and Lyanna could have been honest and still gotten married. I wish they had said something, I really do. But it's a moot point. They didn't. They kept it a secret and indirectly caused Robert's rebellion, but it was definitely not their fault. Lyanna's big brother, Brandon, the Wild Wolf, he and his father rode to King's Landing on the back of the lie. But the war was not their fault either. The war started because the Mad King was nuts. He killed them. The Mad King is the sole party responsible for Robert's Rebellion. This brings us to point three, arranged marriages. Rhaegar and Lyanna were indirectly responsible. And so was her arranged marriage to Robert Baratheon. Ironically, the rebellion began with more arranged marriages, Ned to Cat and John Arryn to Liza, uniting the Riverlands in the rebellion and the war was sealed with an arranged marriage, Robert and Cersei. Robert and Cersei were doomed from the start, and so were John and Liza, because John Aaron was really old compared to her, and she loved Littlefinger. So Liza poisoned him, the hand. Robert called upon Ned, then Cersei poisoned Robert. The War of the Five Kings broke out, and Rob got betrothed to the Frey Girl, which he broke, leading to the betrayal, the Red Wedding. The point is, aside from Ned and Cat, arranged marriages have harmed more than they've helped in recent history, starting with Rhaegar getting an annulment and Lyanna breaking her betrothal. So if anyone gets married in Season 8, it's going to be for love, like Arya and Gendry, Jaime and Brienne, Varys and Theon. Think about it. Assuming they win the War for the Dawn, there's no better time for a global reset, a cultural shift, than after you win the war versus a dead army. Which is why I also do not expect people like John or Gendry to be legalized. That'd be silly. They've accomplished so much while being looked at as bastards. Busted. Or no one. They need to lead by example and wear their past as armor so that they go down in history as bastards, bettering the world for the children of tomorrow. Team Bastard. But here's the kicker. One reason, from a storytelling perspective, why Arya needs to be the one to kill the mountain, Sir Gregor Clegane. So from the Lannister's perspective, the first move of the War of the Five Kings was when Catelyn kidnapped Tyrion. But from Beric Dondarrion's perspective, which presumably aligns with the Starks in this case, the first move was Tywin Lannister, sending out the mountain to ravage the small folk. Tywin did this because he hoped that Lord Eddard would ride out. That's a Ned Stark type move. Ned's not just going to send people, he's going to lead them. So Tywin was hoping that Ned would ride out and then the mountain was going to kill Ned. Unfortunately for Tywin, Jaime ruined this. Jaime loves his little brother and Jaime used to be very quick to temper, reckless. Rob Stark used Jaime's recklessness against him at the Battle of the Whispering Wood. Go check out that video. So Jaime was pissed and he went and threatened Ned by killing Ned's men in King's Landing. Like, give me my brother back, bro. My brother, Lord Stark. I want him back. Ned was injured in the process and thus, Ned could not ride out, 
so Ned sent Beric Tondarian in his place. But the point is, from the Stark's perspective, the Mountain was involved in the first move of the War of the Five Kings. The Mountain was baiting Ned. The plan was to kill Arya's father. It didn't work out as planned, but the War of the Five Kings nearly ended the Stark bloodline anyway. So the Mountain's death is personal to the Starks, which is one of many reasons why Arya is going to be the one to kill the Mountain, not Sandor. And she's going to use this exact move. We'll explain it in the full analysis video. But first, I gotta prep for Friday's live chat on the Justin Thomas show. So if you like Jon Snow, he's a bastard of Winterfell, Ned Stark's son. Subscribe to both Justin and Living My Rhapsody, because we're gonna be doing a Sandor video chat on her channel soon. But that's it for this one. Hit subscribe. I'll talk to you.